Bacteria in a bottle products are becoming increasingly popular in the fish keeping hobby but they are controversial with people often getting mixed results and many people saying they saw no difference in their tank cycle and time when using them. Due to this I wanted to publish a dedicated video on the topic to try and take a more detailed look at them and try and help you decide if these are worth your time and money. Before I go any further I want to quickly say that I'm not saying that these products don't work at all they just seem to have a very narrow water parameter range and I'll go on to some studies later in the video that suggest outside of these water parameter ranges the effectiveness rapidly drops off. So starting with Fritzheim 7 as it seems to be the most popular product used by people on YouTube in the fish keeping hobby and credit to Fritz they've definitely done a far better job than the competition when it comes to actually teaching their customers how to correctly use their product. I will link to this page in the video description where it goes over their product but as you can see they clearly explain that their cycling method uses nitro somus and nitro back to bacteria but they don't seem to exactly confirm if this is all that's in the bottle or if there are other things but I'm presuming it's just these two. Fritz are also completely open with the limitations of their product and clearly show that it works best within a 77 to 86 degree Fahrenheit or 25 to 30 degree Celsius temperature range and a pH range of 7.3 to 8.0. Now just to quickly put this in perspective for my own aquariums because my 40 gallon community tank and and both of my better fish tanks will all fall within this recommended temperature range. When it comes to the pH, the inverse is actually true where my guppy tank and various neo caradina tanks are the only ones that hit the recommended pH range for the product. So out of all 10 of my aquariums, I have none that meet the recommended water temperature and pH range for this to work correctly. Another thing that I like about Fritz is that they clearly explain ammonium on their website and mention that it's not as toxic as ammonia and they seem to actually try and help their customers and the difference between ammonia and ammonium will become more important towards the end of the video. Fritz also mentioned that their product will require KH and phosphate in your aquarium to actually work with a lot of people overlooking this. Now I know it's a very niche type of aquarium but something like a Taiwan Bee shrimp tank usually aims for a KH of zero meaning this product will struggle to work even if all the other variables are correct. You may also think that phosphate is very common in in aquariums and in established aquariums that is correct now you need to do regular water changes to reduce phosphate or I have algae breakouts. When it comes to a brand new aquarium that you're cycling phosphate can be limited because there's no fish waste breaking down and the aquarium plants in there won't have any decaying leaves or anything like that to add phosphate to the water throwing another variable into the problem. Fritz also clearly tell you that their product will require an ammonia source to work and believe it or not some of the competition don't tell you this and I know there'll be a lot of beginners out there who won't realize you need to feed the bacteria to get it to do anything. So yeah overall huge respect for Fritz just on how detailed this page is and they're completely open and truthful about their product in my opinion. Moving on to sea chem stability and to my knowledge this is currently the most popular bacteria in a bottle product on the market by far. Sea chem do mention that competing products are unstable and require specific conditions as confirmed by Fritz on their own sale page but Seachem offer very little information on their own product. They claim that their product contains a synergistic blend of aerobic, anaerobic and faculative bacteria but don't name any specific strains. I actually found this forum post by Seachem staff claiming that their strains are proprietary and they won't go into detail on them. At first glance this does sound very professional but I'm just getting Seachem Matrix vibes from this if I'm honest. For anyone who doesn't know Seachem Matrix is a type of filter media that Seachem claims on their website controls nitrate levels in their aquariums. Products like this are often called into question especially their ability to help reduce nitrate levels in anybody's aquarium. Thankfully Seachem have a dedicated research area on the website where they publish independent research into the effectiveness of their product when they are called into question. For some reason they decided to commission an independent research study into the actual surface area of Seachem matrix rather than its ability to reduce the nitrate levels in your aquarium. I just kind of get trust me bro it works please buy it vibes from stuff like that 
and it's a very stark contrast from how open and honest Fritz were with their product. Next up we have API Quick Start, another very very popular product on the market that is also very controversial in how effective it actually is. Unfortunately I can't find any information at all on the specific bacteria strains in this bottle. They do link to their own in-house research rather than some independent research into how effective their product is but there's even no mention of the specific bacteria strains in this research either. Next up is Tetris Safe Start and the official page does set off some alarm bells with me when it claims that you can introduce fish immediately when setting up a new aquarium and using this product. Technically this is doable with a fish and cycle in a correctly set up aquarium but for someone who's brand new to the aquarium stuff like this shouldn't be advertised to them. For some reason Tetra seem to have two official websites tetra.net and tetra-fish.com with both products having slightly different packaging on each in a different description. Their tetra-fish.com site confirms that the bacteria in their product is nitrosomus, nitrobacter and nitrospira bacteria strain so at least we have something to work with for this one. Finally we have NT Labs Filter Start and I know this isn't as popular over in North America as it is here in Europe but here in Europe especially the UK NT Labs is very popular. Thankfully NT Labs confirm the wide range of different bacterias they use in their product and they have some unique ones that aren't publicly listed on any other pages. I did actually manage to find some research into how effective the unique strains of bacteria are that NT Labs to use but it was only a four day study so it does kind of make me question how practical it actually is. So moving on to taking a look at if these products actually work and the main issue is the actual effectiveness of nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria in the average aquarium. This research that I linked to in the video description directly looked at the effectiveness of ammonia oxidizing archaea and ammonia oxidizing bacteria in freshwater filters and found that archaea were the dominant colony in 23 of the 27 filters tested. They also found that RK seemed to be solely responsible for processing the ammonia in 12 of those 23 filters where the RK colonies were dominant, suggesting that the limitations listed on the Fritz sales page are correct. Unfortunately, the study doesn't go into much detail on the specific water temperatures or pH ranges used for the testing, but I would guess that the ones where the RK are considerably more dominant or exclusively responsible for the processing of ammonia are outside of the recommended water temperature and pH ranges for the bacteria. The researchers cycled the aquariums 40 times during the research period and consistently found that it was RK that was the dominant colony forming and processing the ammonia in their tanks. Now one very important thing to note is that the researchers did find that the RK colonies are better adapted to low ammonia environments potentially making it difficult for RK to form in aquariums that are doing their initial cycle and have spiked up ammonia levels. This could suggest that the bacteria colonies could be a better option for the initial cycle of aquariums with the archaea colonies building up later in the process. The problem is these bacteria colonies seem to struggle outside of the recommended ranges so questions whether they're even worth using at all. This research that I'll also link in the video description isn't anywhere as near as in depth as the first piece but their data does seem to back up the previous research. They found that the ammonia processed in their freshwater tanks were not due to any types of nitrosomus bacteria at all. If we quickly go back to the Fritz sales page, they clearly show that their product is based on the system of using nitrosomus bacteria for the processing of ammonia, but this research does throw doubt onto the actual effectiveness of it. Now I will be flicking back to the Fritz sales page a few times, but I just want to quickly say I'm not trying to throw hate at them at all, and it's actually because they took so much time and effort to help their customers that it's easier for me to go back to that for comparisons and the other competing bacteria in a bottle for sales pages where they have limited information. But as I covered back at the start of the video, the majority of the bacteria in a bottle products rely on nitrosomus bacteria for their ammonia processing, but this research found that none of their ammonia processing was done by nitrosomus bacteria. Now this research is a little different because it's based on recirculating aquaculture systems rather than aquarium filters, so think of the huge industrial fish breeding tanks for the pet trade or where they breed fish for human consumption, and I do think some are used in industrial aquaponics too. This research also found that archaea, specifically the ammonia oxidizing archaea, were in abundance in the tested RAS systems. The research did manage to find that there were some nitrosomus bacteria on the RAS systems that they tested, but they noted that the archaea colonies were far more prevalent than 
at the Nitrosomus colonies. They also found that two different Nitrospira populations were present but they couldn't find any Nitrobacter colonies. Again, going back to the Fritz page, you can clearly say that they say their method is based on using Nitrobacter to process the nitrite into nitrate, but this research couldn't find any Nitrobacter on 15 year old industrial level RAS systems. To me, this just seems to further cement that these bacteria colonies just don't do well outside of their relatively small recommended water parameter ranges and again shout out to Fritz for being so open and transparent with their customers on the limitations of their products when the competition really don't give any information out. Now if you remember earlier in the video I pointed out that out of all 10 of my aquariums not one of them meet the recommended water temperature and pH ranges for Nitrosomus and Nitrobacter colonies. So moving on we get to this research which is also linked in the video description. It found that Nitrosperia like bacteria colonies were most likely responsible for the nitrite processing in freshwater aquariums. The problem is out of all of the bacteria in a bottle products that I touched on back at the start of the video only two of them publicly confirmed that they contain Nitrospira bacteria and that was Tetra Safe Start and NT Labs Filter Smart. Later in the paper, the researchers commented on how their research seems to lend support to other research that shows Nitrobacter are not the major components of nitrite processing. Unfortunately, a lot of these bacteria in a bottle product only contain Nitrobacter rather than the Nitrospira colonies. So with the research suggesting that the effectiveness of these products is questionable at best, at least for a large number of people in the fish keeping hobby, I want to touch on three methods that have worked well for my own aquarium when cycling them. The first one is the standard fishless cycle that I'd honestly recommend to most people and it's what I use for most of my aquariums and it's where you use an ammonia solution. Personally I use Dr. Tim's ammonia solution but there's a bunch of ammonia products on the market you can use for this. Essentially you'd set your aquarium up, turn the filter on, Dose the aquarium solution of your choice as directed by its label because some are slightly different strengths so always go by the label on your specific product and then you'd wait four to six weeks for the tank to cycle. I know that this defeats the purpose of the bacteria in a bottle products that are meant to save you a week or two during the cycling process for your tank but this method of just letting everything happen naturally not only saves you money but guarantees that the bacteria and archaea colonies that naturally grow in your tank can survive in your water parameters. Now this next bit is purely opinion on my part but I've seen a lot of people on Reddit and social media make posts saying they were able to cycle their tank then for whatever reason their cycle crashed later down the line. With My personal theory is that they've used a bacteria in a bottle product and they've been close to the recommended water parameter ranges when it comes to pH and temperature and then for whatever reason their pH has increased or decreased because aqua soils lower your pH in your tank and then it's killed the bacteria colonies and crashed the cycle. This is why I just like to do it the old fashioned way of setting the tank up and letting nature take its course by simulating a bio load with some type of ammonia. The next method is to squeeze a filter from an established aquarium into your new aquarium to spread the gunk around. Now personally I don't do this much but that's mainly because until recently the majority of my tanks were actually Wallstad method tanks that rely on plants for natural filtration so I had nothing to squeeze out into my new aquariums. That said though I do know that this method is controversial and there's a lot of people out there that say this doesn't really help much but I also know some people who I trust a lot and they are very very experienced who absolutely swear by this method. If you are looking for a way to quickly and easily cycle your tank then I do think that this is the best option as you are moving bacteria and archaea colonies from the established aquarium with your water parameters into a new aquarium that will usually have very similar water parameters. Obviously Obviously the main downside for this method is that you actually already need an established aquarium to use so you have access to the filter to squeeze out. If this is your first aquarium unfortunately this method is close to useless. So moving on to the third option and in my experience this has definitely been the easiest way to cycle a tank as fast as possible and that's simply to use live plants. Now keep in mind Fritz do say that their bacteria in a bottle product does better in hard water so most people who will be using this method will be using soft water. Water, and this is where the ammonia and ammonium difference that was mentioned on the Fritz sales page comes into play. The actual amount of ammonium in your ammonium to ammonia ratio in softer water starts to drastically increase the softer your water gets. 
Thankfully, live plants seem to love using up ammonium as a food source and fast-grown stem plants like Limnophilia sessiliflora, Rotola rotundifolia, pearlweed and many, many more will hu- consume huge amounts of it to grow. Floating plants like Salvinia, red root floaters and Amazon frogbit will also use up large amounts of ammonium in your aquarium too. This is actually one of the core concepts of the Wallstad method that I mentioned earlier where you use plants for natural filtration. So the softer your water, the less likely it is for these bacteria in a bottle products to actually work but it also means your ammonium level will be higher than your ammonia level. You then add your live plants to the tank which sucks up a ton of the ammonium in there resulting in less nitrite being produced by the bacteria in RK colonies that are in there and because there's less nitrite being produced they are only require smaller colonies that can form in a shorter period of time. Live plants will also consume the nitrate that ends up being processed out of your nitrite as well, as well as some excess minerals in your tank, helping to reduce the nitrate levels and TDS levels of your tank passively and potentially reducing the number of water changes required. So yeah, my personal favourite way to cycle a brand new aquarium is to put a ton of live plants in there, definitely some stem plants and some floating plants, use an ammonia solution to dose it and get everything started and then just wait a couple of weeks. In my experience it's worked very very well for multiple tanks. Anyway guys that brings the video to an end. Some of these bacteria in a bottle products do seem to work and I do know some people who use them and do get good results but they seem to require very very specific water parameter ranges and the research seems to back that up where you have a very narrow window. So personally I'm just not going to buy them anymore. I just don't see the point with my tap water being way out of their recommended ranges and the plant and ammonia solution method working so well for me. I hope I've been able to help people decide if these products are worth their money or not and help people understand why and when these products might actually be worth your time. Thanks for watching guys and have a good day.